So the blood of a hemophiliac um, doesn't clot, and so they're very prone to bleeding to death. Um, so this is the pedigree of one of the royal families of Europe. Um, Queen Victoria here um, was the monarch of the United Kingdom from 1837 to 1901. And hemophilia acquired the name uh, the royal disease because of the high number of descendants of Queen Victoria who were affected by it. So if we look at the key over here, um, we have um, unaffected male. We've got hemophiliac, which are all males because this is an X-linked recessive disease. Um, and there was no females who had a father with the disease. Um, so there was no chance of any females having the having the disease um, so far in the in the pedigree. Um, so all the hemophiliacs are male. Um, then we've got the possibility of an unaffected female or a carrier. Okay, so um, if we look back in history before Queen Victoria, there are no known hemophiliacs um, in this royal family. So the assumption is that the hemophilia mutation occurred in the DNA of Queen Victoria's uh, father's sperm. So she was the first um, hemophiliac in uh, this royal family. So she was a carrier because remember for females they would need two affected um, X's since it's X-linked recessive disease. And so um, here are her children and she kind of got unlucky here because she had um, four daughters and three of those ended up being carriers. So we've got Victoria, Alice, and Beatrice who are carriers and then she had a son and the son was a hemophiliac. Um, so he also passed that trait. So all of the descendants here actually got um, the first line of descendants actually got the um, allele. Okay, so then if we follow it down, and, and Leopold died, so you'll see most of these hemophiliacs died um, pretty young. He actually was one of the longer living ones. Um, and especially if you think, you know, back, we're talking late 1800s, um, you know, not the best, best medical care. Um, so for someone with hemophilia, they're not going to, most likely not going to live very long. Okay, so if we look down to the next generation, so this would be essentially Queen Victoria's grandkids. So again, we've got, actually in this generation, all of the females are carriers. And we've got one, two, three, four um, affected males who you can see, again, all died young. And then we've, all, then we've got four unaffected males. Um, it was very common um, in royal families for... Um, cousins to be married and so that can actually sort of concentrate the allele and so um, we've got like this here this is cousins cousins getting married um, and so you can see that they actually end up with um, both children having hemophilia um, so now we're on to the great grandkids um, <laughs> This, this guy down here was murdered and maybe he was more likely to die because he had hemophilia so he bled um, more easily and then all these all of the great grandkids here um, were males and ended up um, with hemophilia um, and then it does actually say um, she had more children than what are shown here so um, it's got six of the 34 are shown. So there was more, but this is just to show you some of the, um, of the uh, family tree.